Hello everyone, this is KJ4YZI. You're watching Ham Radio Concepts, and I got something here for a video I purchased on Amazon. Something that I need, I don't need like I need to hold in my head, but I might be late to the party because a lot of people have videos on other Ham Radio channels. They have these, and I'm a little late to the party, but I want you to check this out, and I'll show you in a quicker video, and the link is in the description. I think I paid $89 for this, and you'll see everything it comes with. Um, if you purchase that link, uh, if you purchase through that link, yes, you will, I will make a few cents on every sale through Amazon gift card. So Amazon makes me say that. But beside the fact, I might replace my MFJ with this. I might not. There's a couple things that the MFJ makes it easier or a regular standard antenna analyzer. But this thing has got a lot of features that you may want when you're talking about ham radio antennas and other things for feed lines and stuff like that. This is the Nano VNA H4. It's a handheld vector network analyzer, which is a fancy way of saying antenna analyzer, but there's more than just an SWR, you know, without being an expert, you could look at Smith chart, polar chart, um, you could look at reactance, resistance, uh, impedance, SWR, phase of an antenna, capacitance, or all kinds of stuff with this thing, okay? So the good thing about this for $89 is it will do like 50 kilohertz to 1.5 gigahertz. So you could test almost every antenna you got. I think it says after 300 megahertz, it's using harmonic points to, to measure all the way up that high. But if you have something that high, you might be able to, to test a lot about, you know, with it. Uh, see a lot about something at 1.2 gigahertz. So this is battery operated, touch screen, okay? It's got two uh, antenna ports, two channels on here, channel zero, channel one, or various things. For the most part, for SWR, you're going to use one of them. But you could use this for, you know, testing possibly cable uh, parameters or or um, you know, uh, two, two different antennas at one time, two different traces at one time, up to four traces, I'll show you that. But battery powered, and it comes with, I'm gonna show you why, I don't do unboxing videos anymore, but I'm gonna show you why, because there's a lot of things this comes with, and there's some out there that just come with this. Okay, so it's very important. First off, the manual, it's not a manual. It's a directory or a structure menu, it's just menu driven. You can see on here, there's a lot of menus in here. Uh, and we'll show you some of that. But look, resistance, reactance, uh, you know, linear, polar, phase, delay, Smith chart, SWR, electrical delay, I mean, low pass, impulse, band, you know, velocity factor, all kinds of stuff on here. If you're Chinese, it's right up your alley on this side. But it doesn't tell you how to use it. So again, there's other YouTube videos, other ham radio guys, not just me, and they're out there and they show you a lot quick started and get started. But I'm going to show you the very basic get started and I'm going to test a two meter antenna and show you just what it looks like and what you can do. And then you take it from there and become your own expert and teach me something about it, okay? That's, that's more fun for me. I don't want to be an expert at this stuff. Um, so it, also it comes with the uh, USB-C. So again, battery operated, charge at USB-C. And from my understanding, you can use this on the computer with a cable and map all this and extract that information to your computer and use it on your PC or laptop, okay? Um, it's got two little uh, SO230, uh, uh, mini, uh, SMA mail rather, jumper or cables, you know, and these are basically to put on here to extend it so that you can put your appropriate adapter on this end and test your antenna. Um, with that being said, uh, yeah, well, I'll show you that in a second. It's got a little little pen here, a little stylus for the touch screen, which does work um, on uh, your finger as well. And three loads. Now here's the thing about this, you have to calibrate this when you go jump in frequencies. You can't just go from 27 megahertz CB to UHF 440 and not have to recalibrate. So there's three of these. There's an open, a short, and a load. And they're not, met, they're not labeled on these, but the way I can look is the first, there's two of them that are like gold color. One has no pin inside, that's an open. One has a pin inside, I would assume that's a short, a dead short. And then you have the load, which has a little load on the top of it. So in the calibration, I'll show you here in a second, you're gonna go set the frequency to start and stop range. And then in this situation, I'll do 140 to 150. And then I'll do a calibration and I'll connect this onto channel zero, right? And it also comes with, which is in my pocket, I'll show you, because uh, for a professional world, I use an Anritsu Sightmaster. This is a lot more professional than this. And every time you use it, you got to calibrate with the test cable and stuff. So your calibration includes the loss and everything in here. So what you do is it comes with this little SMA uh, barrel here. So you go like this, and now you'd start open, run the test, 
short, run the test, and load. Now your calibration starts right here at the end of this line right here. So that's including this in the calibration. So I'm gonna show you that now. That's the very first step, getting it started on the frequency range, the calibration, and then uh, I'll take it outside. We'll hook it up to an antenna real quick. And you'll get the idea of what you can do with this. For $89, it's not a bad piece, man. All right, so let me show you this thing. So on the top here, you have an on-off switch and a thumb wheel. The thumb wheel rocks back and forth. Then you push it, it becomes a menu. So we're going to turn this on. And you may see some stuff in here from me playing, but I'm going to give you a quick overview, okay? The first thing you see here on the bottom is your start and stop frequency. So that's going to be whenever you're, you're sweeping, you know, an antenna uh, where the frequency range is. And then uh, up on top here is where the, uh, you know, that's, that's where your marker is. So if you see if you move this, see if you move the marker, that's, that's the frequency that you're at. Shows you the result here. And then this is the, the battery over here and um, your, your channel trace. So for instance, what I can do, let me, let me calibrate this first, okay? Well, first I'm gonna set the, uh, the frequency. So what I would do is I'd go to stimulus, all right? And start. So the start frequency, again, will be 140, oops, 140 megahertz, kilohertz, gigahertz. So I'm gonna megahertz. And then your stop, push this in again, would be 150 megahertz. So I'm gonna sweep 140 to 150, okay? That's what I'm gonna sweep. Now, go back into here, and I'm gonna go back, and I'm gonna to go to calibrate. Okay, first one is open. So what I'll do is, I'll take the open little, what do you call it, a slug, uh, uh, Calibration, whatever you call it. Okay, there's an open, right? Screwed on. And I hit open. And then it gives me a check and it moves down to the next one. Now it says short. Pull this down. Pull this off, rather. Get the one that's a short. Again, it should be the other gold one with the pin in it. That's a short. Now it says load. Load. So. Again, I do the same thing with my Enritsu Sightmaster, and also when I worked at at and I had to do like a CELT test, which did the same thing. It opened, short, and then it would do the, the load, which was the test, and, and that would give you, you know, T, for TDR, time domain, reflectometer, all that stuff. So there's a load here. I'm gonna hit load. Okay, and then done. Now you could also save that for two meters, for 140 to 150. I could totally hit save zero, and now that is, I, I have saved the calibration. Now if I wanna to go to 27 megahertz CB, I can save that on one, and then I wanna go back to two meters, I go back to save zero. And it, it saves the calibration for that frequency range. Okay, so right now, at this point, I am ready to test a two meter antenna. So what I'm gonna do, I'll bring this outside, all right? And I'll give you a couple more demonstrations. So first, uh, you can, set up different traces, and I'll show you that outside. So you can have the Smith chart going at once, then you can have a, the SWR in a linear form, then you can have the, the, the phase at the same time, or return loss, or reactance, up to four traces, I'll show you that. Um, a lot you can do with this, guys, for, for that price. And uh, again, I am not an expert, so there's so many things in here that you could probably do that I don't know about, um, and and you may say, wow, uh, you know, and you may get more from that. But I'm showing that the average person is going to want to use this for testing the SWR, maybe the Smith chart, and, uh, you know, checking their antennas and seeing, you know, what's going on with them. Now, a couple things compared to, I may or may not sell my MFJ269C. It goes to UHF, you know, HF to UHF. But this is harder to read in direct sunlight, all right? So... Uh, this, some people have said that too on reviews, it's harder to read in direct sunlight so that may make it not so convenient out in field day compared to the MFJ, it has an LCD screen, but LCD, the uh, MFJ takes 10 AA batteries where this one is rechargeable, yeah, weigh it out. Uh, and I'm only using the MFJ because that's the one I've had, I have for a long time. I've had a rig experts, I've had all kinds of antenna analyzers and a lot of them work well, but I'm just going by the one that's most common. Uh, not most common, but the one that a lot of people know about. Um, this one will, you know, 
you have to calibrate it every time you change frequencies. Whereas the MFJ, I can slap that thing over to VHF, one, two, three, and just scroll through it and see. And this one, I'm gonna have to have all this with me. So I'm gonna have to have a little bag with my little uh, terminations on here and then, uh, you know, calibrate it. And I forgot to mention, I don't know what this is. This is like a little strap, but I guess somebody was using this like a guitar pick. So if you wanna jam out like K8 MRD radio, you could jam out while you're testing the antenna, you know? <laughs> Actually, you could use that to touch the screen too, I guess, but it's just a little wrist strap. I don't know, I just saw that, forgot to mention it. So let me go outside and check out an antenna and show you what it looks like. All right, so now I have it connected to a Comet dual band VHF UHF antenna. So here's, watch this, let me show you the menu here. So I'm going to go to uh, uh, display channel I'm on zero okay and we're gonna to to format SWR now right away here's the SWR sweep from 140 to 150 and it does change in real time so it will be moving up and down should the antenna be moving or, or whatever now I could do this a couple ways I could take this number one here and I can drag it to wherever I want the lowest dip here would be you look up top here the SWR is 1.05 at 141.200 megahertz, okay? Use the thumb wheel too, and I can go up and down like this. And you can see, you know, right here, what's this peak here? Well, this is 1.7 to 1 at 147. So I'm, you know, you get an idea of the uh, SWR that simply. Now, watch this. If I turn on, uh, oh, I could change it. I can go to phase, okay? I could do, sorry, my hand's in the camera. I'm, you know, I'm trying to do this one handed here. Uh, I could do Smith chart, right? Here's a Smith chart of that. And uh, again, you can roll around and see different markers, right? So you could also do this. Let's go back. Oh, here, more. So you have your, you know, polar, linear, uh, resistance, reactance, Q factor, all that stuff, right? Check it out. Trace. So we'll turn another trace on. Trace two. Now that would be, um, it shows your impedance here. Let's see, hold on. I need to change format. We need to do there. Okay, so now you have green trace would be your SWR in a linear form, and the yellow trace would be the Smith chart at the same time. And as you move this, look. See? And we can add another one. We can go like this, and we can go back and add another trace. Trace number one is like a blue, and we'll put that one as phase. So now I got three of them. I have my SWR in green on a linear form. I have the yellow one as a Smith chart, and I have the blue one as the phase. See, all this is happening at the same time for the two meter band. Now, I'm not sure really what to read about the phase, but you can see it's there. I can add one more. I can add the other trace, which is three. And I can make that format delay. Now you got a screen full of everything. <laughs> so I might want to turn that one off. Let's go. Let's make that one uh, resistance. There you go. So there's your resistance in purple, trace three, right? All this is happening on this VNA. So you, I hope you get the idea. So now uh, if I wanted to change this, and I'll, I'll do this one more time. Let me, I'm going to sweep uh, 140 to 470. So that's going to be both on this uh, Comet, be 144 to 148 section of 2 meters, 430 to 470 or 430 to 450 on UHF, and we'll do just the, um, the, uh, the linear form and see what happens. All right, so now the frequency that I'm sweeping is 140 to 470. That's a large jump there. And what I've noticed is it, that's it's quite a bit. See, so I'm going to move the marker here. You see the marker over here? So I have a dip here, number one is 1.14 at 440 megahertz in that antenna. And if I go up, and it's, it's basically doing this, but you can't see it off screen. So you see the marker over here now is, the lowest SWR is 1.05 at 140 megahertz. So you can do both of the, you know, you can see that sort of spread if you wanted to, to see without having to do it, you know, if you wanted to have a tri-band antenna, you can, you can see 220, it does not exist in this antenna because I can run this frequency right here up to 220 megahertz. 
the 219 would be 5.8 to 1, see? So you could use this as a large sweep, but it, you know, doing it with the, uh, if you look at the Smith, that's not, <laughs> that's just a big geometric shape. I mean, you could, could use that if you wanted to the Smith chart for that wide of a bandwidth, but you get the idea guys. So all in all, um, this little VNA is, is definitely a cool little piece. All right. And I'm going to be using this a lot more, uh, you know, I'll probably try to use this and compare with my uh, MFJ to see have I been missing out the whole time? Is my MFJ just as accurate? Uh, am I going to keep the MFJ for just a quick test and then use this to analyze other antennas that I'm working on? I'm not sure, but take a look at the link in the description on Amazon, and uh, that's where I purchased it. And take a look at other videos on YouTube on other people that made videos on this that show you probably a little bit better setup, but you get the idea. Thanks for watching. More videos are on the way. 7-3. This is KJ4 YZI.